If you want to see Emily Fox, today's video is going to be the announcement of the books I will be reading for my Goodreads reading challenge of 2021. So basically, this is my third year doing it. I go and look at the Goodreads Choice Award winners and nominees and choose the categories that I am interested in. And then I read either the winner, but if I've read them, I read some of the other nominees. And then I do my own Choice Award the following year. So for 2021, I will be reading the books that were published in 2020 that were just announced now. So let's go through the list. I have mentioned that I would make some changes because last year, oh, well this year, <laughs> with the winners of last year, eh, uh, it was a little rough. I don't know if it was just the year. I mean sometimes some years maybe the books were just not that great. Maybe I didn't read the right ones in each category. Uh, so yeah, some slight changes. For example, the amount of books in total is halved because last year I had like 40 I was wanting to read which was a little excessive because I tend to read about 100 books a year and uh, so far this year I'm at 70 something. So I read less because of the slump I was because of the pandemic. So yeah, I'm reading less, but I'm hoping I will choose right. <laughs> okay, so uh, the winner for best fiction has been announced and it is The Midnight Library, which I'm very happy. It's the one I voted for. I really love that book. You will see it in my end of the year series. I just did the award show for the ones of last year for this challenge of this year. This is way too complicated for no reason. Uh, I had read three and hated all three. So I had told myself I would be very picky for this category. Um, I had read one more book in this one already, which was such a fun age, which I did like, uh, but that's in fourth place. So second place is Anxious People by Frederick Bagman. I <laughs> wasn't 100% sure I was going to read it just because I have read two books by him, uh, A Man Called Uva, which I did like, and then one more that I can't remember, Bear, Bear Town, <laughs> which I had to put down, I couldn't deal with it. But uh, I am willing to give it a shot. So I think I will be reading Anxious People, or at least try it. It's like 300 pages. His books are pretty fast reads, so I'm okay with it. And then the second book I chose is My Dark Vanessa, just because it's the one everyone told me to read. Uh, in the video, I was announcing which books I was voting for in each categories, and everyone was telling me that this was amazing, but dark, which I will wait until I'm in a good place to read it. I think that's it for this category. Uh, I do have The Glass Hotel on my TBR long term, uh, but I've been told that it's possibly so-so. The reviews haven't been super great and I just want to give the author a second chance because I did overall like Station Eleven by her. So yeah, I'm not including it in the challenge, but it's on my TBR long term. Second category is Best Thriller at uh, Mystery and Thriller, which, oh my god, uh, for the challenge of this year, awful. So many books I did not care for. I'm happy that a lot of you agreed because I was starting to feel feel like I was the Grinch or something. Like, do I just not like mystery thrillers? Uh, but I feel like thrillers, they're so hit and miss. And I feel like just because you read 10 that came out this year doesn't mean you're gonna even find one that you enjoy. So, uh, so far in that category, the final 20 nominees, I have read three. Two, well, one that I really like, one that I liked okay and one that I didn't care for. Uh, I haven't read the winner, which is the guest list, which I hadn't heard anything about it. So I'm happy about it. To be honest, I will just go into it pretty blind. I will be reading it. Uh, I don't know when exactly. Uh, the rating is like not super high, the overall one, but there's over 150,000 people that read it. So I'm curious. I feel like that category, it will depend on how things go. Because <laughs> if I read a couple good ones, I will be more motivated to continue than if I keep reading bad ones like for this year. In third place is uh, The Sundown Motel, which I'm iffy about just because I have read one other book by the author and I liked it okay, so maybe I'll give her a second chance kind of thing. I know everyone was talking about The Wives, which I don't know. I feel like I'm possibly gonna hate it, but when a book is controversial, I wanna read it. I just wanna know how I will feel about it. So we'll see. They're like the three that I'm looking at. Let me know if there's anything else you think I should focus on, but I have read three so far. If I read another three, it gives me like six possible winners for next year. So yeah, not too bad, but you know, I don't want to do like last year, this year, ugh, and read like 10 and hate all of them. <laughs> Except one, I think, but yeah, that, that was a lot. Best historical fiction was one of these uh, category where I was not sure I was going to read any, um, but I already have on my TBR Magic Lessons because I have read Practical Magic and the other prequel from the same series. So I think maybe because 
witches in 1800s, I believe, 1600s. So I will most likely read it uh, just because I'm interested in witches. But in first place is The Vanishing Half, which wasn't on my TBR, but because it won and because the ratings are good and there's like 150,000 people that have rated it, I am adding it to my TBR. I'm not gonna be super strict if I don't get around to reading it, but I am definitely open to reading it because I don't read a ton of historical fiction, but when they get very popular, I give them a shot and I feel like it's like 50-50 that I'll enjoy them, so hopeful. Next is Best Fantasy, which this year is the category I am the most excited about. It usually flips around between fantasy or sci-fi, but you'll see sci-fi later. But yes, fantasy, the winner, no one is surprised, is Sarah J Maas. This is where I get annoyed by the whole popularity contest because there's less ratings than votes for the book, and it goes like that for a bunch of the other books. Like, for example, Rhythm of War by Brendan Sanderson, which is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive series, and there's like 9,000 ratings now after everything is done, and there's like 34,000 votes. <sighs> but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So yes, I will not be reading Sarah J Maas. I think she's just officially on my red list to not read list. Second place, I am so sad because there's like 2,000 votes difference. <sighs> the Invisible Life of Adi Rue. It should have won, but whatever. Oh my God, it's even worse for the votes. There's like 93,000 votes, but 50,000 ratings. Um, I've also read the one in third place. I just finished this. The House in the Cerulean Sea, which you'll see my rating soon. Uh, as far as, again, fourth place was Rhythm of War, I'm up to the second book. I need to read a second book, so that doesn't really count for the challenge. So, we're back to number five <laughs> to 20, which ones I'm hoping to read. The City We Became by N.K. Jemison, already on my waiting list at my library. I forgot to mention that one when I was uh, looking at the nominees. Also on my TBR, The Ones and Future Witches, Piranesi? Piranesi? I don't know how you say that. Um, I wasn't really interested because that cover, I usually don't read books for the covers, but this one is like not attracting me. But the ratings are pretty good and people seem to enjoy it. So I'm willing to give it a shot. It's at my library, so you know, nothing to lose. Uh, a Deadly Education by Naomi Novik, also my TBR. I'm almost done. I'm probably gonna be done today with The Burning God. So that's not really my TBR. Black Sun is also my TBR. And then last but not least, The Bone Shard Daughter. That's a lot, but so many books I'm really interested in reading. I feel like often in fantasy category, which is the case for a bunch of the other books, it's like book number like eight in a series, which I'm like not going to read seven books to read the one in this uh, category, but a bunch of really new ones are standalone. So I'm excited to read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nominees. And I've already read, like I said, one, two, three, four. So I'll have like 11 to choose from whenever I do my award show. That's good. Uh, next is romance. Romance is one of the categories that I'm not planning on reading them. Uh, I have heard a lot about the winner though, from Blood and Ash. So if I'm, you know, going a little cuckoo during February, you know, Valentine's Day, maybe I'll pick it up. Uh, it happens once in a while. My cold dead heart wants to read some romance. Uh, but I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Now, best science fiction. I feel like there aren't a lot of books that are already on my TBR. I feel like I haven't heard of a lot of these. So if you have any of the nominees that you're seeing that you think I would enjoy, please let me know. Uh, I have read the winner, which is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. Actually, I DNF'd it at 60%. So I won't be doing that to myself. In second place, there's Harrow the Night which I just read Gideon this year and I enjoyed it. I've heard that the second one is really weird, but it is on my TBR. I'm planning on attempting to read it. In third place, there is Network Effect by Martha Wells, which is book six in the Murderbot Diaries series. I have read the first three. I have the book four on my waiting list right now in my library. The books are like a hundred something pages, but book five is thicker. I think it's 300 pages. And then book six is again, a hundred something pages. I'm loosely putting it on my TBR for the challenge. We'll see what happens, but you know, it's there. Then we have the space between worlds, which my library had, so I put it on my waiting list. I have read A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, Axiom's End. I wasn't planning on reading it because I avoid reading books written by booktubers or YouTubers, I should say, just because I don't like it. With the style of reviews I do, 
I, I don't want to do that. But uh, a lot of people told me to give it a shot, so I will attempt it. If I hate it, I'll just put it down. My goal is not to like bash someone that will actually watch my review, you know? Um, and I think that's it. I feel like there aren't that many. I'm a little disappointed by, you know, the possibilities here. Probably again, because I don't know any of them. So uh, any of the other ones that you think I would like, let me know. Horror, I am not doing it. <laughs> I feel like every year I'm disappointed by the winners. And right now I have already read three of the nominees, including the winner, which is Mexican Gothic. Um, which to be fair is probably the one I enjoyed the most between the three that I have read. And in second place is uh, a Stephen King book, which right now I'm not planning on reading. So we're skipping completely horror. That's a first. Uh, I'm also not reading humor. I've done it twice. Twice I didn't care for the book, so we're not doing that. Nonfiction, I had already put on my TBR Hood Feminism, which is in second place, so I will uh, attempt to read it. I wasn't really planning on doing anything else in this uh, category, but the winner is Stamped, which I have read something else by the author, so it's again loosely on my TBR. We're skipping a few categories. Even Science and Technology, usually it's one of my favorite categories. Like this year, I have read so many but none of them are really appealing to me, so I think I might skip it, which is so weird because again, it's usually my favorite category with like fantasy and sci-fi. Uh, so yeah, unless there's something on there that you think I would love, I think I'm just gonna skip it. Uh, debut novel, it's a repeat of the other books in other categories. I'm not planning on adding anything else to my TBR from that one. I'm skipping young adult fiction, but for uh, best young adult fantasy and science fiction, I'm not reading the first place, which is the third book in the Cruel Prince series. I, I no, I'm skipping that series. Uh, I only read the first one and didn't care for it, so I didn't read the second one, which actually won last year. And I'm not gonna read the third one. In second place is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which I am hoping to get around to reading, but everything else I have either read or I'm not interested. So that's it. About 20 books for my Goodreads reading challenge of 2021. I feel like it's a lot less books than usual, but I think it might be a good thing. It's gonna leave me more room to do other reading challenges or uh, just try to get around to reading my TBR because definitely keep an eye out because I'm gonna be doing 21 books I wanna read in 2021. <laughs> it's starting to get a little ridiculous. Like I feel like when it was 16, you know, it was doable. 21 is getting a bit much, but again, I read about 100 books a year. And if this challenge is only 20, I feel like it's gonna make it a little bit easier uh, I'm trying to focus on a few categories and reading a couple so I can do actually, you know, a award show at the end and have a few possible choices. <laughs> so yes, uh, let me know in the comment section if you think I have missed any books that I should be uh, adding to my TBR. Let me know if you actually want to buddy reads these. I think I might do a book club on Patreon if you are interested, let me know. Uh, I'm planning on changing a few things on there too for next year, probably will happen very soon uh, to announce the changes, but yes, probably a book club on there. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I will see you in an upcoming video very soon. Bye.